everyone has bacteria in their intestines, in their gut. And if you don't, you're probably far worse off for it. That's right, worse off. Your gut is supposed to be teeming with billions of bacteria, viruses, and other microorganisms that are linked to your health. However, the presence or absence of certain microorganisms can put a pretty big dent in your health, as many have been linked to weight gain and overall metabolic syndrome. So, what's going on here? I'm going to describe a few ways that uh, these microorganisms in and on your body, your microbiota, affect your weight, inflammation, and metabolic syndrome. Now, of course, this isn't all-encompassing, so don't walk away from this thinking this is it, but it is all information that I've gleaned from a scientific review. First off, the microorganisms in your body generate various metabolites that can be taken up by your intestinal cells and deposited into your bloodstream. Once there, they interact with a variety of cells and change how these cells behave. A good example of this is the synthesis of a metabolite called butyrate. Butyrate can lead to the promotion of a tighter intestinal wall, as well as the release of anti-inflammatory molecules like interleukin-10. Interleukin-10 then convinces or influences immune cells to be less reactive and remain in their more quiescent state. These effects are important because a leaky gut wall allows damaging bacteria and their toxins into the bloodstream as they pass through a weakened epithelial wall. Beyond that, if they find themselves in the bloodstream, they activate the immune system, causing further damage by leading to mass inflammation throughout the body. So these metabolites have wide-reaching effects that hinge on creating the right population of microbes to make up your microbiome, and in doing so leads to improved health by reducing inflammation. Secondly, these microbes, through similar mechanisms of releasing molecules like butyrate, but also other short-chain fats, can help reduce weight through a variety of mechanisms. So butyrate seems to reduce the activity of a hormone, neuropeptide Y. Neuropeptide Y is a hormone that is released by brain cells called neurons and normally binds to other neurons to influence them to make you feel hungry. So reducing the effects of neuropeptide Y would reduce hunger and reduce food intake. Yet beyond that, butyrate also stimulates fat oxidation, meaning it increases fat burning within the cells of your body. One final point on butyrate is that it is inversely associated with blood sugar levels, which means that if there are higher butyrate levels found in the blood, there tend to be lower blood sugar levels. However, this is only an association, so who knows if it's actually directly causative. Still, not too shabby for some bacteria in your gut. All in all, these are all weight and in the grander scheme, metabolic syndrome effects. Thirdly, your gut microbiota can have more direct effects, not necessarily limited to the metabolites that they produce, but also through the production of other molecules that can bind to the nerves and travel from the intestines to the brain. For example, a massive nerve that regulates many processes within the body is called the vagus nerve. And the intestinal cells are capable to communicate with this nerve through the production of molecules like glucagon-like peptide and serotonin. These molecules bind the vagal nerve, which translates the signal back to the brain. So bacteria in the gut can influence these intestinal cells to produce more or less GLP, that's the aforementioned glucagon-like peptide, which reduces appetite and helps in blood sugar regulation as well. So the point being, it isn't only blood mediated. Clearly, there are many, many more ways, some known and some unknown, that your microbiome influences your health. But did you know that there are things that you can do to influence it? Meaning, there are therapies and nutrition changes that encourage the growth of more beneficial bacteria and dissuades the growth of less beneficial bacteria. So, how about we look at a few of those what saith thou? Let's go on to the next video. I'll see you there.